are you doing, Dan? I'm doing well, how are you? Good. This is for your recital? Yes. That's correct. Which is? Uh, in January, well, I should know this, January 18th, Saturday. That's getting kind of soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. You want to just dive right in? Sure. Sounds good.
feasting, most of them come on that second beat. So we're getting the yada ba, Okay. So we're we're in one, but he's really giving you this this beautiful. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Just a little bit of thought of that, and also a little bit more. I would take a big line. I would take a pencil and go over the first four bars. Okay. So all of the articulated notes, all of the articulateness is within the context of a graceful phrase. Okay. Okay? Alright, that's already better. How do you feel about vibrato? Um, I mean, I, I guess I, in this I've struggled to maybe find a place to use it. Right. Because all the notes are moving by so fast. Exactly. Um, right there, that's begging for a little tiny bit of finesse. Okay. Okay, and it keeps it from sounding, you know, da 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 Right, which is how you sang it the first time yeah. when you sang it. Yeah. Right? Sure, sure. Okay, so that, you know, again, we don't get much at all of this. It comes back later, later right. da bum, when it repeats toward the end. Um, but that's the, the only place that you have anything like that, so try and sweeten the sound the tiniest bit. Sure. And, you know, that was already better, just thinking the longer phrase. And I'm going to do this because if you see it in the music, I'm going to write in that, okay? Sure. And I don't mean, you know, play legato, it just means connect that, okay? <laughs> exactly the same. Right. I think you could give it a little more direction okay. without people going, oh wow, we played the second phrase louder. You know what I mean? Right. It's uh it's and it's more musical intention through the phrase. Sure. Okay? <laughs> student is you're having to shift your mindset from being a student all the time and thinking, you know, it's like we go into lessons and we open up our head and go, okay, tell me what to do, right? We sit in ensembles a lot of hours a day and just wait to be told what to do. And we often don't take our thinking to that next increment up, just one more notch well, that was okay, but it's, it's missing something. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's better. Now it's still, you know what I mean? Yeah. You'll notice when you start teaching, when you give a lesson, your brain is like in that mode all the time. Mm -hmm. And you've done teaching, right? And it's just, it's really odd how we turn that mode off at school. Mm -hmm. I still find myself doing that. 
You know, it's like, okay, I'm a student now. It's like, wait a minute, no, I'm not. I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> so, you know, when I approach my pieces, I, I, it's that intention of deciding, all right, that was good, but is, is that the way I want it? Is it really the way I want it? I mean, the reason um, Christian Lindbergh sounds like he does is because he has decided on every single note, and I do mean every single note, how he wants it to sound. Every single note he's made a decision. Nothing is just chance, okay? So for you, preparing for your recital, you play so well, don't get so wrapped up in the, well, this is Baroque and you know it, it moves a lot in trombone, it's like, ah, yeah. that you forget about how good you are and that you already know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Okay, now, the technique part, tongue and slide and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, a good friend of mine, Jan K. Rice, uh, talks about the, the armature and the tongue and the slide being like Larry Bowman and Curly. <laughs> Do you really want them in charge of anything? <laughs> no, right? Sure. So, as we know, air should always be done, right. right? Okay, so to get everything lined up perfectly, let's go back and I want you to just start right here and just play this with no tongue at all so that you feel like you're blowing a big, fat, easy air strike, okay? So, air moving easily, right? And when, when you do it with no tongue at all, especially on something that's leapy and bouncy, you, it immediately shows you if you're notching the notes, like if your lips are in the right place, because you just won't hit it, right? Or you'll sound like a really large person falling down a flight of stairs, right? Yeah, I love that sound, don't you? <laughs> right. Okay, so one more time, blow through it. Nice and easy. Good. Now, do that one more time and let me hear that beautiful finesseful sound you had a little a minute ago. Several things have to happen. The air has to be there, right? The slide has to be in the right place, right. and it has to match up with your tongue. Yeah. It's really hard to think about tongue and slide coordination. Mm -hmm. That's the hard way to do it, right. okay? It's easy to move your slide in rhythm. Right. That is easy, right. okay? So you just fixed air and rhythm, right? right. Yep. Now let's fix is every single note right dead in the center okay. and rhythm, okay? Good, okay, now, that also told you, do you need a little bit more air on some of those? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's like you're launching balls of resonance out your horn. Do that. There you go, make them bouncy. Good. Do it again. Just, uh, oh, on the horn. If it's not, right. it won't line up and it'll sound like flams. Yep. Okay? So now you just put that together. Okay? That's kind of been the, the struggle of like what I, especially like being here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's intimidating here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. 